Hey right, everyone, welcome back. Hopefully good to go. Let me know. Are your ears happier? Are both your ears getting their full contentment of Dota 2 audio and action? I, I sure hope so. Um, as said, I'm Godstrom Beyond the Summit and this is our WPC uh, English coverage for the WPC Dota 2 tournament. I'm Gods and uh, IG versus CIS Game 1. I'm going to go right into a Ferrari 430 Ember Spirit. Uh, Sanking going to be the second pick for IG and an 88 Invoker for CIS. So it looks like we will be seeing a black Invoker. He has kind of taken over that solo mid role, uh, known for his previous carry play, uh, his hard carries, his anti mages, his PLs, whatever it may be. But he's now playing solo mid for this Chinese team, CIS. And uh, we'll see exactly what he's going to be on here in this opening game, as uh, it looks like it will be an Invoker for him. Unless they do run that safe lane farming Invoker, which some teams run every now and then. Go for like a safe lane exit invoker, go for your Midas Necrobook, have another kind of semi-carry, semi-carry such tempo control in the mid lane. Let's see if that's going to be the order of business here as uh, the next couple bands coming out. Center not being picked up in the first stage. Actually, no, sorry, it's banned out. The uh, bottom bands go to bottom to top. So he was he was banned out with the Marana and then we had a Lifesteal of Wraith King banned out by IG. As for CIS, well, they ban out the Lycan, Batrider, now Elder Titan and Dazzle. Are we actually online, guys? Hmm. Let me have a look quickly. Do let me know if everything should be... It should be looking pretty good now. Yeah. As far as I can tell, the stream should be online. Although, we're panicking. Hold on, hold on. Let me... Oh, there we go. The stream's back up. We're good to go. There's just some slight, slight delay. There's no stream delay, but there's still a... There's still like a 30 second delay just with the Twitch... The Twitch natural delay, so... Uh, it seems like everything is is back in back in action. <laughs> We've rebanded. Audio is fixed, and uh, we got a faceless void pick coming out of CIS. That's interesting. That's something new. And uh, looking forward to uh, seeing uh, what how this faceless void works out. Faceless void seems to have suddenly re risen up and become one of the uh, bigger, more often pick carries uh, as of now. With a uh, Witch Doctor, there we go, Witch Doctor Faceless Void, now that's a combo. I mean, you look at Chronosphere and what it's setting up, you've got Invoker, likely be an Exo Invoker with Meteor, Sunstrikes, Witch Doctor, with the ulti of course, Ancient Apparition Ultimate, all of this combined with the Chronosphere is a ton of killing power. And the beauty of the AA plus Invoker, this is global ganking. Faceless Void can essentially just kill any hero solo. If he's just by himself farming and there's like an offlane hero trying to contest his farm, or the enemy carry trying to contest his farm, you chuck a Chronosphere, you Sunstrike, you Ice Blast, that hero is as good as dead, unless this is like late game and they're really freaking tanky. So, um, Witch Doctor coming out, and I'm going to say, looking forward to seeing this hero in action, as uh, Visage Sanking going to be the support hero for IG, but I like CIS drafts better so far. <laughs> Maybe I'm just biased because of the uh, the Witch Doctor Void picks and all that. Uh, but we'll see exactly what's going to be uh, done with this last pick of theirs. That's going to round things off, and it looks like they do still need an offlane hero of some sort, and... Strong offlaners are uh, kind of far and few between right now, with uh, Centaur banned out, Clockwork being taken by the IG camp, so there's still Timbersaw, but he's not really what I would consider a currently very strong offlaner, per se. Um, otherwise, you, and Elder Titan's banned out as well, Batrider's been banned out, so there aren't a whole lot of options as far as offlaners go for CIS, but uh, they, they'll make do. Uh, they are on the dire side, so the dire offlane's a lot trickier than the Radiant one, you do have to be a bit more careful about who you send there. Maybe just go for a standard Darks here. If you can't get much in the lane, you just back off, go to the jungle, and get your farm levels there in the in the jungle. So, we'll see what it's going to be. Doombringer going to get banned out by the CIS team. I think re recognizing that IG do still need some kind of a safe lane farmer, and with the Ember Spirit mid, it may not be a true hard carry. We saw Chuan playing Luna yesterday. Um, I think we go. We get the holy triangle of uh, Faceless Void, Ancient Apparition, and Invoker with a 33% win rate. Combo, I don't know how often it's being picked up, but hey, um, apparently it's not very good together. <laughs> Which doesn't really make sense, because the heroes do synergize quite nicely. Um, I feel like your lanes are not bad, like AA is a solid support to have with your Faces Void, and Voke is a pretty good 1v1 hero, but this is probably like a very small, like, 3 game sample size based on 33% win rate. Maybe it's just won once and lost twice, and who knows what games they were done and picked in. So... We'll see what's the last couple picks going to be. One more ban coming out of IG here. They're looking at offlane heroes. Like, this is... Uh, I, this is where you ban Darks here, I'd say. I don't think... Timbersaw is there. There's your, like, your Pucks. Maybe your... I mean, Pucks on a bad offlane effort because it doesn't need too much farm. Just needs to stay alive and do as much as he can in that offlane. Um, 
but I think Darks here. Oh, Nyx is okay. I forgot about yeah, of course. Nyx Assassin's still in the pool as well. I think he, uh, you're your true top tier off laner as far as what's left in this pool. So this could force me into that Darks here, and I think you'd prefer the Nyx to the Darks here. Nyx is just a bit less farm dependent, can do a, a lot more with just a few levels and without items, whereas Darks he really needs uh, to get not just like a his early couple of levels. He needs to get like his level like ten plus to get points in the wall of Replica, whereas Nyx you get level six, you can go ganking. Uh, and even at the early sub-level 6 levels, you can actually help out other lanes. Uh, if you find an Invis rune, you can help out mid. You can do a lot more with a Nyx than you can with a, a Darkseer early on. The one benefit you have for the Darkseer is you can fall back to your own jungle. So, we'll see what it's going to be as uh, CIS grouped up around Mr. Black, the former LGD Int carry, the former uh, Mouse Sports carry. This guy's been around for a long time. Now residing in China, it looks like he's ready. They're sitting back down, ready to go. Last pick coming out. It's going to be the Puck, so... Talked about this here in the offlane a bit. This is uh, this is kind of has an advantage over someone like a Darkseer, just because, once again, it, the Darkseer suffers from the problem of needing a bit too much farm, a bit too much levels, whereas Puck in the offlane uh, can kind of come back just through levels. He hits level 6, has a Dream Call to go ganking with. He can just be very elusive and hard to kill. And IG, last pick Razor coming out of there. That's a interesting little curveball. As we'll see how that fits into their draft. As it looks like the IG camp is ready to get things underway. We'll see what's going to be coming out there. As, uh, IG, where is, hmm, are we panic? Oh. <laughs> oh no. Ten seconds remaining. LD, please, LD, please, have mercy on our chat. Five please seconds We're going to help ourselves in the game though, guys. It is our opening best of two, quote unquote, two game series for the WPC Joe 2 Action Day. We've got the WPC between Prepare IG and CIS, battle. followed up by DK versus HGT. We've got ZSMJ in action. ZSMJ's team, HGT, have been on a bit of a tear as of late. They've been winning a lot of series They're in the grand finals for the WBW, having knocked out LGT, uh, and uh, looking forward to see how they match up against DK. That's going to be a tough one for them, although DK did lose to Newbie just yesterday. So, hey, you never know. Could be possible. Uh, but on the, the Radiant side, we are going to see team Invictus Gaming. We've got YYF. Playing the clockwork. It looks like he's actually going safe lane here. So maybe looking at a 1v1 matchup against who what they would expect to be the Puck. But we'll have to see if that's actually where Puck's going to be headed. It doesn't look like it is. And then we look towards the uh, Chuan. Going to be playing a support Visage. Got Ferrari 430 on the solo mid Ember Spirit. And then heading up towards the off lane. Got Kyuju. This is not Faith. Playing the Sand King. Okay. Got a, uh, a stand-in potentially. I'm, I think this is the manager or the manager slash coach for IG. I'm not sure what's up with Faith. Maybe he's for some reason can't play today. But... No faith. Well, well, we'll see how this works out for them. And then finally, it's going to be Luo. Boots first Razor. He's headed up top. So it looks like Luo is back to his carry roll. Chuan's back to support, guys. No need to all panic. There was a, uh, a complete uproar on like Reddit. There was a Ghost of Gamers news post. There was like a front page on Reddit about how IG's falling apart, how Luo needs to be kicked, and how Chuan should be playing carry or whatever it may be. Just because of one best of one in the, the WVW. But guys, Luo's back to... The carry roll and Tuan back to support, so no need to panic. Thirty seconds to battle. No need to panic. So, um, but IG do not have faith. That's that's the big news here. But looking on the die side, we've got Team CIS. We've got Demons playing the Witch Doctor. We've got Black actually starting off in the offlane on the Invoker, putting the Faceless Void mid, being played by Mini. We're going to see uh, the support Ancient Apparition being played by Ao, and then finally in the safe lane farming role. Uh, well, safe lane farming role. It's a solo role. It's going to be the Puck playing a safe lane, so he's up against this trial lane. I guess maybe expecting the offensive trial lane out of the Razor. You want to put that Razor against begins. the Void, and that's where CIS dodged this trial lane, put the Void bid. It's just going to be a dual lane versus an Ember Spirit, and it should work out okay for them. The Razor pick was, I feel like, largely intended to slow down and shut down the Void farm, because Void's one of those heroes, if he's not farming well on lane, he can't really do too much. Like, once he hits level 6, he can get kills with his teammates, even if he doesn't have much farm, but Ideally, you want to be getting uh, the farm as well to go with it, and that's where they're going to send him mid. Uh, not only is this going to be easy to farm in the mid lane, but he can also get level 6 with easy. He's not in the trial lane, he can do a bit more out of this, and oh, yeah. immediately, Ferrari's Flame Guard, he casts it, gets blown up. That magic absorb, it absorbs 50 magic at level 1, and I think that's, yeah, 50 magic damage from one chilling touch right click. First oh no. First blood, bottom lane. Oh no, sorry, top lane, the top lane trial lane. Oh, what am I talking about? The puck at the top lane gets killed by the, by the uh, trial lane. That's a good start. As uh, we will see CIS uh, continue the faces void farm mid lane. Chuan immediately seeing this. He's rotated out of the top lane. They get the first blood and say, thank you very much, Mr. Puck. We'll be heading, I'll be heading mid now. And Chuan 
the IG support player, not carry player as it may be right now. Um, trying to act as that carry, maybe. Attack. Gets the first blood for himself and makes his way towards mid lane. He's got boots first and looks like he's going to be helping out Ferrari 430 in the uh, mid lane as uh, CIS. Off to a pretty good, pretty good start with the mid lane. And the off lane, you've got the Invoker plus Witch Doctor. And then uh, bottom lane, you've got YYF. Magic Stick picked up. He's going to be up against a pretty tough dual lane. So Witch Doctor Invoker, not your conventional off lane. Nothing uh, too out of the ordinary, I guess. But putting the clockwork not in the off lane just because they wanted to get this uh, r this Void shut down. But Void, mixing it up at mid. He's got 600 gold. He's off to it. Uh, it's pretty much as, as good as you'd expect from this start. But now with the Visage mid, Visage not really the best mid dual lane support here. That's the big problem here for IG. They react to these lanes by sending a Visage mid, but as Visage does not really push the Void out of lane too much, and he can't really trade blows too easily. He's got zero base armor. He's going to go scout out this two-minute ruin up top. It's a double damage. That's going to help him out a lot in this mid lane. He can actually trade blows. I was talking about how he's not a good, su no, no, not a good support. No, no, no. Well, with this, you can see him uh, do a lot better here. LD man. Stop telling the chat. If you want to be awake, you can come co-cast. Stop slacking, bro. I'm on to you. <laughs> Everybody punch LD for not co-casting. That's what we're going to do here. <laughs> Trying with double damage at mid. This is... It doesn't really bother Mini that much. He's got the stout shield. He's doing just fine. And uh, Ferrari, he's going for so far. Two points in the flame guard. Hasn't actually leveled up anything uh, beyond that. He wants to decide if he's going to get Searing Chains or the uh, Slider yeah. Fist. So it's kind of keeping things open here. And uh, there we go. Gets a Slider Fist at level 4. We'll probably see that first point in the Searing Chains. The Chinese Ember Spirit player is almost always going for this flame guard build. Rarely will you actually see the kind of Arteezy favored build, which is the Searing Chains plus Slider Fist. And, uh... Oh, this dual lane bottom, I, uh, actually Witch Doctor is left, Witch Doctor says, I'm peace, peace and out of here. Dyer's Goes top, top he's going to be helping out the puck, attack. so. Witch Doctor and puck out the, the uh, top lane, Sanking rotates bottom so he can do some pulls, get some farm, get some levels, but unfortunately this is blocked off. Just a sentry ward, so it will be expiring in the next couple of minutes. No need to panic just yet. And, uh, bottom lane invoker will be exhort, two exhort. Pointing in the Sunstrike for ready, and he can look for some kills in these other lanes if they get a good setup. And the problem is Void AA, no real setup potential there, so we have to just rely on some pure MLG sniping skills if to get any kills there with the AA plus Faceless Void. Uh, top lane, you've got the Witch Doctor plus Puck, and once again, no real setup for a Sunstrike. That's, they've gone for this Exor build, and there's nothing to set things up anyway. Mid lane, meanwhile, AA going to be brought down, it looks like. Ember Spirit and Visage teaming up for that one. There is going to be a Clockwork Rocket Flare flying in. Ferrari needs to be careful, Sunstrike! Ooh! Chuan walks into it, Ferrari. He manages to avoid it. That hits him, and he's still low on HP. Would have been brought down, and now there's going to be an Ace Rune spawning top, and this is Ferrari's to take. Three points in the Flame Guard, and now he's going to be having a full bottle to help him out of this mid lane. So nice start for IG. Up two kills to nothing. And uh, Ember Spirit, he's he's on, on a roll right now. now. After that kill, he's got 14 CS. Uh, behind the face is Void, but Ember Spirit, you're not worried about getting complete free farm, dominating the CS. You're just worried about getting those early levels and getting kills. You're a tempo controller uh, until you get to the late game stage where you've got Battle Furies, Crits, and Divine Rapiers. But for now, fairly standard stuff coming out. And uh, Ferrari, Haste, Bottle, level 5. And once it's level 6, that's where this AA in lane. I don't even know if he can stay here. They've got no crowd control whatsoever, and that's definitely a big weakness in the CIS draft. Meanwhile, mid lane, see? <laughs> they're trading blows here. Clockwork and Sanking winning for a kill, but Black gets the, uh, the first kill before Sanking gets a return kill, but I think Sanking lucky that he could even get off that last... He got off the last right click. If that wasn't going to kill him, it wasn't even going to be a kill. Meanwhile, mid lane, Ember Spirit. He's gone in, and this is going to be a dead Ancient Apparition. Soul Assumption Twan says, kill secured, bro. Ferrari, not going to get the kill there, but he's now got himself even more at this mid lane. More space to just get complete free farm, and I think CIS going to abandon some of these lanes. They actually TP the Invoker up top. Buys two TP scrolls, uses one to get up top here. In flame, is he level 6? No, he's not. Cast him to go out. Luo should be just fine. He's got face boots. All four are going to be sidestepped, and Luo's in no danger at all. And that was with Black rotating up top. Did have the cold snap, but with Puck not being level 6, they just had no way of getting that kill. Chuan's now up top as well. He's level Radiance 4 with two soul assumptions. And under attack. IG, four kills to one. Advantage going their way, and Ferrari's at level 6 now. So this is where the danger truly begins. Faces Void is... Going for what looks to be a Midas first, saving up 17, 1800 gold. And uh, that's. I, I feel. I don't know if you can. You're, you're going to be under so much pressure now if you're CIS that I don't know how, if you can get away with this Midas. 
Like, I guess your other face is void, and the idea is you, your other four teammates will create space to allow you to go this minus, but you've got an Ember Spirit who's level 6, who's going to have face boots up already. Now, finally, he's getting every single rune as well at the same time. We've got Chuan, who's got already two kills for himself, and going to have a pretty fast level 6, because the uh, familiar's coming into play soon, so... I feel like CIS just don't have a very good defensive lineup uh, to deal with this aggression. Now, oh, they've got the Searing Chain. That's a dead Witch Doctor. Nice rotation from Ferrari. Saves the Invis rune as well, so he can go back mid. Still has that Invis if he wants to try and go in this Ancient Apparition. We'll get scouted out coming back in by this Observer Ward. And meanwhile, bottom. Blockwork wants the puck. Does he go oh, not going for the hook shot. He goes for it and hits it. It's a kill, but he doesn't quite know where the puck's going to position. Ember Spirit now level 7. He's got the max flame guard. This is a lot of damage output if it doesn't get broken. And there's nothing really to break it with unless you get a lot of chilling touch hits off. This is where level 1, it's 50 magic absorb. Level 4, it's 500 magic damage absorb. And you're not going to get 500 ma magic damage out of chilling touch alone. You need someone like the Puck if you want to break that. Speaking of Puck, bottom line, he's been enga engaged on YYF. He's f <laughs> he's faking the hooks. He's like, dude, if you're not going to... You're not going to orb, I'm not going to hook you. <laughs> he just kept like... Fake cooking and Puck's like, well, I'm just gonna walk around in circles and wow, well, that's quite happy to get the kill without even having to use his uh, his hook shot. If he can hold on to it, he will. Mid lane demons, witch doctor, and then apparition here, but a nice ward planted behind between the tier one and the tier two. Gonna scout out the witch doctor and any other heroes who might make their way towards this mid lane. So that would have been the uh, the visage Chuan coming in from behind to plant down that ward. They are gonna look to poke in for a kill here. They've used the Chronos for your chilling tubs coming through as well. Sunstrike is there, Ferrari though. Oh, he will be brought down. It was actually a lot closer than... In the end, he got blown up by the, uh, the Sunstrike game. Now, Void at the mid lane taking a lot of damage here. They do get the kill. But that Flame Guard tanked a lot of that damage. Like, all that Chilling Touch bonus damage got blocked off by the by the Flame Guard for the most part. But they got what they came for. A kill on the Ember Spirit. Much needed kill as well. Lewis going to make himself uh, known at this mid lane. He's working on the mech for the team. He's going to be playing that utility style carry where you go for the mech. You go for this early game team fight pushing build. Radiance this is just going to make him have a really attack. scary four five man group up type of lineup. You get the fast mech. Ember Spirit's going to be peaking soon around. I'd say like the level ten when you've got Max Slider Fist and Max Flame Guard. That's really with a phase drums. Maybe just a phase brace of magic one. That's where Ember Spirit's really at the peak of his early to mid game Dyer's damage output. Tower. You haven't got the, the extra points in the Searing Chain, so you've Dyer's only got the uh, the two second duration, but Illusion. still very powerful tool to have. Puts the, the fire room in the trees for the escape here. They are pressing this mid lane. Chronosphere is still on good on. There's going to be a Searing Chain. Just casual harass out onto Demons. This gets him down below half HP though. And the problem is task not going to bounce anywhere. Fire room to the side. He's still got three bottle charges to, to heal up his mana. And that uh, looks like they do want to go back in and try and bring down this T1 town without Chronosphere. They know this is safe. Oh, we have gone in. He wasn't looking for the Void, it looks like. He wanted the Puck. Puck's already used the orb. Now Searing Chain's going to go out. That catches the Witch Doctor as well. Puck avoids the Solar Sumter, but he's brought down regardless. And Clockwork still alive, just barely. This Maledic going to come close. The tower hit. Oh! The tower hit finishes them all. That Maledic wasn't going to kill him, but the tower hit sure as hell was. And Faces Void gets himself home. T1 tower going to go down. And uh, that's going to be the end of that in the mid lane. Clockwork. Two for one trade, plus the T1 tower going IG's way is a clear IG victory. But ideally, they would have had Clockwork survive there. Unfortunately, that's where not having the mech uh, comes into play. They're getting aggressive, they're diving towers, even though they've got the. They had the better initiation, they had the better position, but without the mech, it just means you're often going to be trading kills a little Radiance bit more. Because Sunstrike's come in from top attack. lane, and Black then has got a return kill. Uh, I think. Actually, Black didn't get the return kill, but it was. The, I think Maledic with the Sunstrike on top of him doing a lot of damage. But now there's a Razor mech. Now Sanking has a Blink Dagger as well. Go with his item set. And he's hit level 8. So this is a uh, pretty good timing for your Sanking Blink Dagger. Has a point in the epicenter. Three in the Sandstorm. Has the Bar Reflect. Does get scattered out with the Blink. But unlike your Bat right away. As soon as you get your Blink where you're thinking. Okay I got my Blink just now. I want to find a kill right away with a Smoke Sanking. It's it's more a bit more so about just your, your team fight. Your mid game threat. And you don't really mind if your opponent see that Blink Dagger. As much as someone like a Bat Rider does. For your first game. I mean you're going to be forced just to time walk away from that one. The Static Link coming in from the void and he's not going to be able to farm anyways here and he didn't go for the Midas so he went for some early treads did pick up a gloves of haste but I don't feel this is a Midas I think this is more likely to be a maelstrom build out of him wait and see but uh, tread Midas is not going to give him that much damage output it helps his farm gives him some attack speed but the treads maelstrom a bit more damage output and you're going to be fighting a lot early that's the big thing is here is that IG with this mech razor uh, with the ember spirit are going to want to take fights 
And we've got the phase drums now on Ember Spirit as well. Only level 8 though, so ideally you want Ferrari uh, to get that level 10. That's where the slider fist gets really annoying to deal with. And they grouped up near this bottom lane. Chuan's got Arcane Boots. Has hit level 6 now, so not as fast as, you, as I expected based on all the early kills he got, but still pretty decent timing for some of these levels to come out. But CIS, their big problem is in these fights that they're... Like, their two supports don't have level 6 for one thing, so they haven't got these key, ult key ulties to combine with the Faces Void, and there will be a Blaro Strike through. Kyuo gonna help set up a kill on the Witch Doctor, and he actually gets the last hit for that one. Now Faces Void goes in, has a Chrono Spear, but do you really want to use on the solo Sand King? He decides no. And with Ferrari rotating in, there's a Clockwork Rocket play to get some extra vision, and I don't think they want to fight here. Clockwork's now. They've got, kind of got them hinted, although it looks like they're just gonna regroup up and uh, reset just for a straight up T1 tower push here in the bottom lane. Faces Void and Puck both have ulties ready to go, but without the Ice Blast. I just... Mm, they maybe get one kill on the Chronosphere, but IG are going to get three plus kills in return, it feels like. Oh, fun, man. Please. Don't feed, this, don't feed familiars. Well, just feeds it to the tower, but now he's only got one familiar for this fight for two minutes, in fact, so... I'm right, going to keep those familiars alive as well as you can. Dyer's and uh, Duo now positioning themselves in the trees. Does have to wait Radiant's for the blink to come back up, and it doesn't look like attack. CIS want to engage on this. There's three points in the time walk. Puck does have his orb, but with the way IG are pushing, they're actually teeping heroes down here, CIS, but keeping just Razor on the front line. Uh, YYF also putting up there. This is their two tankier heroes, and two heroes that are hard to engage on. You engage on the Razor, he's got the mech, he can static link whoever comes on him, and YYF, he's fairly tanky, he can use the cogs to prevent anyone else actually making their way into the fight, so... And be careful with how you engage on this, and I don't think you want to defend. No Witch Doctor or a level 6. It's just not worth the risk. How gets an eye nicely played by the puck. That to me is denied. the best result for CIS. I don't think they wanted to rotate all five heroes in down bottom, because this is just not efficient. They at least have like AA mid, because AA is not offering anything except like what? Tuck is chilling touch defensively. They are gonna go in the puck here. Puck, he's brought down. Look at it go as the Witch Doctor has done a lot of damage on the cure here. He's been hit uh, by the Dream Fall, but that's not gonna bring him down. Sun Strike. Off the mark. Hits YYF, unfortunately, he was looking for the Sand King. May as well throw those and have a go. And AA is taking over the mid uh, the bottom lane. So I, I think I would have preferred if he was just mid lane early. Because this mid lane is completely empty. And they knew IG was going for a 5-man push. AA could be level 6 by now. At least have someone farming mid lane. It looks like Black is going to go there. But they were never planning to defend this T1 tower at all. Maybe they were planning to, but they weren't really... In the, they were unable to, end of the day. Like They did not have the levels. They didn't have the items to defend it. They should have just been letting it go. Maybe have Puck down bottom just to spam some orbs and try and stall the push, but they need heroes in other lanes, getting their items up, getting, getting whatever farm they actually can out of some of these other lanes. But we've got Black now, full stuff up on him, that's going to be his first item of choice. We'll just help out a little bit with uh, any uh, getting out of the Clockwork Hookshot Cogs initiation, getting out of Static Link, not that he's going to likely be the one getting Static Link, there's a range here in the back line, but... Uh, just in general, getting uh, getting initiated by the, the long range slider of fist initiation, the blink spur strike from a sand king, just helps a, a lot with your mobility Dyer's and escape. AA is, AA is level attack. six now, so they throw the ice blast top. It doesn't isn't isn't going to be timed up with an initiation though. And the initiation comes from IG. Fire strike from uh, onto inflame. Puck goes down, and that's going to be a dead witch doctor as well. Nice hook shot from YYF. Uh, does get off a, a maledict before he goes down. Interesting that he went for the maledict build. So two one two build. Most Dyer's of the Witch Doctor play I've attack. seen coming out of teams like Na'Vi, I'd say is the main team that's picking Witch Doctor, is heavy, it's like a max cast Radiant's Voodoo Restoration. The Maledict just isn't that reliable Dyer's damage output. The melee cast, like, well not quite melee cast ring, but the really small AoE combined with the uh, the short cast range just does not work Radiant's out well for you as that Ember Sprig gets a solo kill, oh, not solo kill, teams up with the Sand King to get a kill on the faceless Void at bottom lane. Clockwork while you have to go for the trusty old Vanguard build. I kind of like this against the Void. This helps you out because while we have often going to be hook shutting in and in the front lines trapped in a Chronos room, that's where having the damage block against the Void who's not hitting that hard. This damage block is going to be really useful actually. So I, I do think Vanguard's a pretty good item choice here. Can block a lot of the just forward spirits, right click damage as well. So all in all, this is actually a pretty good Vanguard game as far as Vanguard games go. As it stands, IG they seem to be back to their old form. Like they had a, a bit of a shaky game yesterday, a best of one, which they they lost to Vici Gaming, and uh, people were panicking because Chuan was playing carry. They had Luo on support. Everyone's like, "Man, what's wrong with IG? There's all these internal problems." Um, they're changing around their roles, but Chuan back to support, Luo back to carry, IG back to beating. 
teams that they should be. And hey, Vici Gaming is not a team that IG should just hand up, hands up beat. Going into that, IG would have been jet lagged. They would have just gotten back from Kyo. And I would have, I would have said that game is about 50-50. Vici Gaming versus IG. And if I, if someone said, look, you got 50-50 odds, who do you bet on? I probably would have bet on Vici Gaming. Um, I think Vici Gaming have just, uh, would be much more well rested, have had much more time to just prepare and watch IG play at Star Ladder. So they knew how to, how to draft against them in some ways. Although with that said, IG did mix things up with their roles and uh, some of their heroes, but. I, I don't think VG Gaming beating IG is a shocker there. So we will see the current speed coming. This is the Vanguard. This is going to make Wally up so tangy. He's not out of this one just yet. He's going to hook shot in the AI. Ice Blast is there as well. They've killed off two with the Sanking Epicenter. And Wally, yeah, Vanguard saves his life. Vanguard Gaming. CIS Black now. Four stops himself out of there. Ferrari going to catch him out with the Searing Chains. Is there any follow up damage? Flame Guard on cooldown. There's a Blink Bar Strike coming in from Cure. Solar something will finish him off. And now Mini's in trouble. He's got a time walk to the high ground. That'll save his life. Pops a magic stick as well, and he did go back for that Midas in flame now, stuck on the low ground. He gets caught up by a searing chains. He should be brought down as well. Flame guard will finish off the job. And IG are just dominating now. 17 kills to three here in game number one. And IG, this is this is what you come and come to expect from the IG team. Even not playing with faith. Showing that they they're Dyer's doing just fine with their with who I believe is their manager. Why do I have to get caught up by an ice blast, but should be okay. Tower hit is unfortunately going his way, but uh, unless he gets hit by a Sunstrike, um, Invoker's dead, so he's just going to TP home. Knowing that Invoker is coming back soon and doesn't want to take any chances. Doesn't know where the Dire Observer Ward vision is. Speaking of Observer Ward, just the one on the high ground here. Radiant have one in the jungle. Actually scattered up by this Sentry, although it hasn't been dewarded just yet, it looks like. There we go. Forward Spirits will deal with it. And uh, IG smoke up. Actually, very close to this Observer Ward, but I believe they were out of range, and they're going to go gank black. They avoid the Observer Ward, and this is a dead Invoker. He's got the 4-staff. There's going to be... Oh, Searing Chain's actually going to miss. He's tried to 4-staff himself out of there, but he'll be brought down nonetheless. TP's coming in from CIS. Witch Doctor start things off here. He could be in some trouble. If he's keeping alone. Faces Void now shows up as well. Ember Spirit. AA taking big attack. damage. I think Ember Spirit just wants to get the hell out of here. Fire on up to the top lane. <laughs> Takes himself back up top, and that's exactly where CIS just left. Now in comes Luo on the Razor. Going to push out this wave, and it looks attack. like his Tier 2 tower may be brought down. I think Ember Spirit TP'd home, left a fire on. Yep, he TP'd home, left a fire on top, and now he's stuck. This guy's gonna be out. Anyone got a four star? Anyone got attack. any tangos? I need a way out. He's got no fire on this. <laughs> oh, he's just gonna, he's just gonna chill in the trees. HYHY -HY would be proud. No way out for. Uh, I don't think. He, I think he's pretty stuck. He is a good place to hide from the but CIS are not defending this tier two tower. No, the tier 2 will go down. Ferrari, he's almost got a completed battle fury now as well. And there we go, he'll fire run it out. Breaks Dyer's down the trees, gets out of there, and fallen. he'll be good to go. YYF is working on that. Uh, it looks to be a hood pipe coming out, probably for the uh, clockwork to go with the mech of the Razor. And Razor's got a completed Aghanim Scepter now as well, so... The item pickups just keep on coming out for, for IG. And that's where CIS just are not going to be ready to fight in any, any fashion. Faces Void is just a Cronus here. That's all he brings to the table. His damage output just isn't there. Has the Treads minus, and I don't think he can go for any Dyer's big late game item. Like that. Battle Fury, I think, is a big no-no here. I think Maelstrom is probably your best bet as far as just cost-effective damage goes. And, um, and you can just go straight Mjolnir in some ways. Mjolnir, BKB, maybe? I'm not... I'm not sure. I think you need the BKB against the Clockwork Sanking Visage, but I don't think you can go... If you go straight BKB, you've got no damage, and you just straight up lose uh, by having no damage. So I think Maelstrom BKB or Mjolnir BKB, but that's obviously... We're talking about two big items there. Like, I don't... He can maybe farm a Maelstrom this game, but farming a Mjolnir, that's a big, big if. Farming a BKB plus a Mjolnir or a Maelstrom, that's all an even bigger if. So I think we're getting way too ahead of ourselves here talking about these kind of items, but... I mean, if CIS want to stay in this game and give it a shot and plan at least Dyer's to try and stall for the late game, those are the kind of attack. things Void needs to be uh, gearing up towards. As, uh, looks like uh, the Razor Ag Scepter is, well, is completed, but it hasn't come out just yet. There we go, coming out in the career now. T2 tower, tower should be getting brought down. Uh, Chuan's picked up a gem now for the team, so just want to get complete utter map control. Make sure you have detection as well for Black if he does go in this at any time with the Ghost Walk. And he hasn't gone for that Necrobook build you often see from Exxon Focus. It's partly because they're on the back attack. foot. Going uh, going for the uh, Necrobook build is more when you're actually uh, aggressively pushing towers and 
Trying to go for that kind of zoo strat of mass summons to bring down Towson. Here we go. Ice Blast bottom. There's going to be a Faces Void Chronosphere. It's going to be off the mark. Lua not getting caught in it. YWF not getting caught in the Ice Blast either. Everyone, YWF will be brought down. Perhaps does get taken out by the Pucky, but the Sand King's gone in. Epi Center. Barra Strike. So much damage. Just brings down the entire CIS team in a matter of seconds. Five for one. GG well played. Falls black. And there's no way back from this. 23 kills to four. IG stomp their way to a game one victory over CIS. Well, this is a two game series, but that was convincing stuff out of the Invictus Gaming team, playing with what I believe to be a stand-in. And, uh, well, CIS just unable to put up much of a fight at all. You can see there, these guys are... They're not worried. That was easy easy stuff for them. Fun says, no problem. I just want to go home and get myself some dinner. Well, right now, CIS is the food, food de la jour for Game 1. we got Game 2 coming up, guys. It is a two-game series in the WPC. Uh, format. We've got uh, two games today with CIS vs IG, which will have game two coming up soon. Then following that, we hop ourselves into DK versus HGT. That's the game I'm looking forward to today. Um, I think DK definitely favorites coming in. They're the team you'd expect to win, but HGT, uh, they're in the grand finals of the WVW. They beat an LGD recently. Uh, they wiped out everyone in the Chinese pre-qualifiers for the summit, which is teams, tier two teams that you'd probably expect them to beat, but uh, I think looking to that matchup against DK, it's a true test for ZSMJ squad HGT to see where they stand right now. And hey, let's see how DK are doing after winning Starlord. Let's see how seriously they take it. Maybe they'll have a bit of fun. But guys, I'm having some fun here on the Beyond the Summit stream. Casting WPC. I'm Gods from Beyond the Summit. And we're going to be taking a quick break. When we come back, game number two of the WPC Dota action is coming your way. Don't go anywhere.